Good evening and welcome to Mike and Mary with this reflection. And much of this reflection I owe to Rowan Williams to the former Archbishop of Canterbury. Being a disciple is being aware and from that awareness being expectant. So I want to think in a couple of few, these few minutes a little about these two ideas awareness and expectancy. Awareness is being sensitive to the world, to wherever we are, developing the skills so that we don't miss God's presence or Jesus' presence where we are. As disciples, we know that God, Jesus, is incarnate in his creation, in his world. We have to be ready in every situation to see God's presence. Not always easy. Some situations seem Godless, so we have to develop the skills to find Jesus there. When I was a chaplain in a prison, enthusiastic Christian groups would often be keen to come into the prison to bring Jesus in. I would point out that he was already here. You just need to be aware. Acts of generosity and kindness, caring and comfort, were a sign of God's presence. His presence already. These groups were welcome to come in, but perhaps they would benefit from the experience by sharing their experience of God which, with each other and with the prisoners. One of the consequences of awareness is expectancy. Expectancy that God is present and will be found in whatever situation. Even in this pandemic, it may not be clear or obvious, but being a disciple means that you approach any and every situation with awareness of the possibility of finding God. And from that, we become expectant. There are many occasions in the Gospels when the disciples are confused. There's the story of the fig tree. The disciples are confused. We are confused. The challenge to us is, what do you make of it? What's it about? What is required is awareness. Everything is not handed to us on a plate. Being a disciple may involve puzzlement and confusion. Don't be ashamed that things don't seem to make sense. The first disciples didn't have it all sewn up. Your awareness as disciple is like that of a bird watcher. And Rowan Williams has written these words. The experienced bird watcher sitting still, poised, alert, not tense or fussy, knows that this is the kind of place where something extraordinary suddenly bursts into view. He writes, I've always loved that image of prayer as bird watching. And awareness is bird watching. You sit very still because something is liable to burst into view. And sometimes, of course, it means a long day sitting in the rain with nothing very much happening. I suspect that for most of us, a lot of our experience of prayer and the Christian life is precisely that. But the odd occasions when you do see the kingfisher makes it all worthwhile. Hence the picture of this kingfisher. And I think that living in this sort of expectancy, living in awareness, your eyes sufficiently open and your mind both relaxed and attentive enough to see that when it happens is basic to discipleship. Being ready to experience the kingfisher moment, like bird watchers, we might miss the crucial moment. So being aware leads to expectancy, expectancy that God will be found, that the kingfisher will come, and the experience of God's presence should lead to action. For example, we are in the creation season of the church's year when the harvest festivals occur. 
and being aware of the Creator God should lead us to think, what are we going to do about the destruction of the God's planet, God's creation? Perhaps join Extinction Rebellion. So being in the creation season of the year, when we think of harvest and the glory of God in his world, we will have now a prayer and poem by Gerald Manley Hopkins. Now somebody remarked this, I remember well the first time I heard a Hopkins poem being read out loud. I didn't understand a word of it. But his oddities are deliberate and uncompromising. As he disrupts our expectations of language, we are given perceptions we had not dreamed of. He plays with sounds, but like most play, it isn't trivial. So it's an invitation into a fresh world. So if you don't understand the poem at this first reading by Mary, perhaps you might like to look up his poetry on the internet and read it again. It's well worth trying. Glory be to God for dappled things, for skies of couple colour as a brinded cow, for rose walls all in stipple upon trout that swim, fresh fire call, chestnut falls, finches wings, landscape plotted and pieced, fold, fallow and plough, and all trades their gear and tackle and trim. All things counter, original, spare, strange, whatever is fickle, freckled, who knows how, with swift, slow, sweet, sour, a dazzle dim. He fathers forth, whose beauty is past change, praise him.